forging a successful career path begins from your foundation, a foundation of quality and professional education. Campuses. Join us. Together, we will build a legacy. Imad is all it is today because of his excellent and competent teachers. Will you train him to be the perfect place to gain that professionalism that you need and to further your educational career? The Higher Institute of Business Management and Technology, the University Institute for Professionals. Hello to you as uh, good evening and welcome to another edition of uh, Prime R on my media prime. On this edition of the program, we are going to be looking at uh, Konak's launch of <clears throat> an anti-corruption campaign for uh, the 2020-2021 school year. We're going to be looking at how effective this is going to be, given that uh, it is being launched three weeks in two the commencement of uh, this academic year <clears throat> we are also going to be looking at uh, other issues uh, touching on of our national life but uh, knowing that uh, the list of uh, for the regional elections in FACO for the upcoming regional elections for traditional rulers are uh, the names of uh, some traditional rulers were reinstated after the publication of the list uh, today by Elekam, in the likes of uh, His Royal Majesty uh, Chivindike of uh, Tiko, his name was reinstated uh, alongside uh, the, the chief of uh, Mile 4 in uh, Limbe. <clears throat> We're going to be discussing this with our panelists who are already in the house. Three of them are already seated. We are expecting one person to join us in the course of the program. Far every Tayong. Is here with us. He is uh, a militant with the Cameroon Renaissance uh, Movement. Good evening, Elvis, and welcome. Good evening, Kumle Renat. Good evening to the level headed panelists who are here present. Uh, good evening, equally, to the principals of the various schools who are watching us. Good evening uh, to Barista uh, Maya, and also to you, Innocent, who is watching us live from Kumba. I think it's my pleasure. To, uh, I, I'm happy being here today. I think with the topics that are coming up, we'll be able to contribute a modest contribution. Greetings to the people of Gunoko Village. Ba Akwen uh, Nadir is also here with us uh, for the very first time on Prime R. She is uh, PCR and Vice uh, President in charge of. Uh, of relations with the ladies in the diaspora. Good evening, welcome. Good evening, Mr. Combe. Good evening to my co-panelists here tonight. Good evening to all the millions of militants of the CPNR movement scattered around the continental globe, specifically those in the diaspora in the U.S., in Canada, and all. Greetings to you all. Um, did I, is that the, the, the function you occupy in the party? I occupy, I am the vice president in charge of the collaboration and relation with the diaspora ladies of the CPNR movement. Okay. We also are in the company of uh, ba, no, 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 Bendy Theodore, who is a people advocate, a jurist, and uh, a man of God. Good evening and welcome. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kum Leonard. Good evening to Jeff, panelists. Um, good evening to Cameroonians who are watching this program. I think uh, I'm, I was very happy when you informed me about, about, about the program of today, especially, especially the team. I think that Cameroonians who are watching, please give us your ears because whatever you are going to say here is going to be a benefit of everybody. Thank you very much. Okay, we are expecting the arrival of Barrister Achu Julius of the CPDM. 
a party in this uh, edition of the program. We hope he joins us in the course of the program. But uh, we'll start with you, uh, Far Evis Tayong, with uh, news of the reinstatement of uh, some of the names which were before now um, discarded from the list to run for the House of Chiefs for the Southwest region, Fakou Division uh, particularly. Well, I think it's a notable effort. I must uh, say that, uh, for one, the system that used to be kangaroo has done something good. Uh, because for the administrative court to rule against or to rule in favor of that malpractices that had the harm of the SDO for FACO inside, I think that it's, it's a good thing. Uh, what I'm still to follow, because I know some charges were supposed to accompany that ruling, for the restatements, some other damages or some fines, which I will need to follow up to know if the SD was also asked to pay the millions that the lawyers were demanding for to, to, to compensate their clients for inconveniences created. I'm sure if I see that money come in place, then I will conclude as a real system. If not, then I might have to appreciate them on one hand and then put a the question mark on the other because if damages were, were part of it, then all of it with the institution or the with the reinstitution of the list and everything is supposed to accompany as the administrative uh, court uh, is supposed to have gone to the yellow unless they took one part and then left the other uh, part which i will still have to find out but then i, I think that uh, what i've been saying is that in as much as we've been fighting on this list to be reinstated and all the like but at the end at the bottom line on the whole issue is what house of chief are we talking about what kind of house of chief are we talking about what kind of regional councils are we talking about? That's where my problem is. Uh, people have jubilated. I saw people jubilating in the Southwest. Uh, well, the list, the list has been reinstated. But some of us go further. Because if you reinstate Far Elvis to an institution that you will not be able to man things as per se, whereas they tell that the law limits him from doing one or two things, where he only proposes things, and the head of state has the prerogative to accept or not to accept, it becomes another kangaroo house not different from the one in Yaoundé called National Assembly and Senate. So that's where we have a whole uh, issue a worry about the whole thing, which some people don't see it that way. Uh, that's why for us, at the level of the Kangaroo Resistance Movement, we had said that any election as of this period is a sham. Total sham. Okay. Because when we go through the, 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 the objectives and the laws governing the existence of these houses, we don't see them really working as per se in the name of digitalization. Therefore, it is only to deceive us put in place another kangaroo house, when the ones in Yaoundé have not even yielded any fruit. So okay. where are we heading to? <clears throat> Question mark. Okay, Southwest uh, Region Delegates of uh, Divisions, we are talking about the list that was uh, recently uh, published by Lekam, reinstating some names after they were appealed. Or, yes, they were taken to the Administrative Court. It's a constituency division, FACO, political party, CPDM, nature of, uh, <clears throat> nature of correction, candidate number 20. Uh, the name is Mbela Etuga Gevashos, replaced due to ineligibility. Representatives of the traditional rulers, uh, constituency division FACO, they had one list, uh, list uh, headed by His Royal Highness uh, Monono Etina Emmanuel, instead of uh, Monono Etina Emmanuel, Etina Emmanuel and Molive Molonge Otto and Kala Esso Richard, <clears throat> we are going to be having as representatives of uh, the div of that division, our FACO division, according to uh, this list published by Lekam by uh, Monono. Etina Emmanuel, Ndike Kombe Richard, Esombe uh, Nanyue David. So, um, this is a situation as uh, as uh, presented by Elekam after they were taken to court. Are we uh, saying that uh, the courts are now to some extent doing the job? Well, Mr. Kum, according to, um, according to what happened and the list were reinstated, I think that um, the court are really doing their job because this is an election that is at the verge of decentralizing the powers of Cameroon. Mm -hmm. You know, this regional election is being conveyed to be able to decentralize Cameroon and make sure that Cameroon becomes a decentralized state in mm -hmm. to an extent. Mm -hmm. So I think the court really um, worked hard day and night to reinstate the list because it is only the CPDM that is present at 
these war zones. Mm -hmm. other, other political parties aren't present there. So I think um, it's very normal for them to reinstate the list of the, CPN, the, of the CPDM. No, it is uh, traditional rulers. Uh, some, uh, some, some names, uh, this, this, uh, chief, uh, th these chiefs were, were uh, their list was actually uh, rejected, but they took it to court and uh, they, they had to, to plea and, and win. Um, uh, I think the problem is not at the level of going to court mm -hmm. or win. The problem is the transparency. Okay. Yes. The problem is the transparency. Was it transparent? Mm -hmm. Because we have a judicial system in Cameroon that is, that is, that is, that is, what way can I even use, that rely on the government. They are not completely independent. So when you take people to court, and maybe the may, maybe magistrates sit down in, in their offices or in the law court and give judgment and say that no, these are these are these are these are the names that have been retained for uh, 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 the regional elections. I think there is a problem. Okay, we think uh, there is a problem. Uh, our topic for today has to do with um, Konak, the launch of uh, the anti-corruption uh, campaign for the Back to School 2020-2021. Uh, back to school um how important is uh, this campaign for elvis time at this time uh the campaign is selling after the market okay reverend joe Dene and his team are selling after the market because it looks like they just got up from sleep and realized that they had to launch this program to fight corruption in schools I don't know if some people are part of this country or they are daydreamers. A school calendar is made known ahead of time. Ministers announce the school calendar. It would have been but normal for Konak to have taken precautions given that these aspects of my practices are common within the school milieu to have started work from day one. First, Konak officials were supposed to have carried out sensitization and education on education stakeholders before even schools resume. Holding seminars with principals, delegates and other like to tell them get great awareness before even the schools resume. Now, principals have collected money. Extorted money, let me say extorted, <coughs> not collected. Extorted money from parents illegally as many investigations are fine on the ground. I said the last time that I don't know if there's any place that says that form to, be, to collect a form for admission is 2,000 francs. I have not said any education text. And Konak is getting off from sleep but now. When I went to Jetters Limbe, the question I found there, it is now Konak is getting up. I don't even have any guarantee that Konak is getting up to do something. Because I said, from the grounds, which I have been, right up to Tiko Mutengene, you have a school that tells you that in your admission as a new student, you must purchase a bench. And since as you cannot get your carpenter to do the bench because there is a school carpenter, you pay the money and they will in turn give the money for the school carpenter to get a bench for the students. How many thousands of students do we have in that school? You could imagine that at the end of it, you will not get more than 40 benches, but you have more than 3,000, 5,000, 3,500 students in that school. So you could imagine these are things that Konak is sleeping. I have the impression that all the decisions in this country are sleeping. That's why when we say kangaroo system, it becomes kangaroo because first, the problem with Konak is that Konak can only prop into issues and then send them further, which the law courts now, if you look at the issue of the law courts or whatever the case are being around it, they have the prerogative to act on it or not to act on it. But our problem here is that commissions are supposed to be created that have the power to take you to court as per the evidence they have on the ground. That is where Konak will begin to have value. And even as Kona has lost this product, the principals in the schools are still extorting money plus PTA with impunity, as I speak now. What is Kona going to do when they've already collected the money? Will you order the principals to refund the money? When they tell you that the money is to be used to pay PTA teachers, and you look at how much they pay the PTA teachers for 10 months, compared to what they collect, what they collect, it's far more above what they have. If they collect 57 million, like in the case of uh, Jimmy Jaslimbe, working on uh, 16,500 francs, times 5,800 students. If you have the 7 million francs and something, when you have about 8 PTA teachers and your calculation will give you about 3.8 uh, million francs for the 10 months, what happens to the rest of the 
of, of, of the other 52 million. So they these have, are they have, that, they have other projects. So these are say that. No, when you say they have the other project, our question here is, the question here is, if we are coming in to look at these monies, mm -hmm. the projects they have, do are the projects repeating themselves every year? Okay. Is mm -hmm. the money increasing every year? Because I talk about that issue where the the, the PTA is increasing, small small monies of one thousand, two thousand first because they are not accounted for. These are issues connected. It's supposed to be because when you look at a thousand first, the parents pay at two thousand. You mm -hmm. know it. But take two thousand francs times five thousand students. It's not government money. Yeah. It's a uh, whole lot of money. Aquin. Um, some persons are asking why is Konak launching this campaign three weeks after the commencement of uh, the school year? Uh, was it not uh, proper, like he is saying, like Far is saying, that Konak was supposed to have sensitized the population against these uh, malpractices uh, uh, <clears throat> carried out within the school milieu? I think even a month before the commencement of the school year, actually telling parents that if any principal is to ask for, so, 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 inform us. Mr. Luna, for me, I would say, as CONAC, as the name may seem, it is Cameroon National Anti-Corruption Commission. Mm -hmm. This commission was created in 2006 mm. by His Excellency President Paul Bia, if I may say. And this commission is being born to fight against corruption. Mm. But I can tell you corruption in Cameroon has increased like wildfire. So I can say um, this um, campaign, the launch, doesn't really have value. Mm. Because school began three weeks before now. Mm. And we saw parents complaining how they go to school and they are being levied some kind of amount like 40000 you must buy a bench or you must bribe for your child to be admitted to a school. Mm -hmm. Now, Konak is like, you know, to me, I can say the government and its institution always look for means to a stock money because if they tell you the budget Konak brought out to be able to carry out this campaign, to do you, a national campaign. actually, you will, be, you will be astonished because they always look for means to steal money. So there is no need them going out for, for, for something they call a campaign where they themselves, they are, they are the architect of all corruptions in Cameroon. Mm. So actually, for me, it's, it's like selling after the market the deal has been done as my landed colleague of the opposite of the other side said i don't think they'll be able to reform the money to parents and let me tell you when we're going to to, to government schools when we talk of pta teachers this is a free will parents who come gather to pay their teachers not like a an amount that is imposed on parents to give out money that at the, at, they, will, they will consider it as being um, pta mm. To me, it's selling after the market it's and <laughs> always looking for means to, to, to steal money from our coffers mm. because the budget level or the budget accompanying them through this campaign is really high. Mm. At the end of the day, they are doing nothing. They are just hungry people who are just trying to, you know, have some money at the end of the day. Yeah, so, um, but do you think that if they had done something a month before the commencement of the school year something would have changed nothing would have changed cameroon is a corrupt country right from the root it is okay. dipped corrupt from the marrow <laughs> nothing would have changed because this um if, if let me say for example if they launched their campaign a month mm -hmm. before school resumption mm -hmm. These same princip principals of school will still tell you, go and report me. You call the 1517, nobody will answer you. Go and do what you want or you go and report okay, to the president. 1517 is the CONAC number. Yes. Yes. But CONAC was supposed to have come to the media, go to the radio, yeah. television a month, and then tell people that if a principal asks, but don't you think that some principals would have gotten uh, scared if that was actually made public? I don't, I don't think some principals would have been scared because it is a regime. They are part of the regime. You report them and nothing will happen. They are accountable to their boss. It's like a chain. Nothing will happen. Hmm. Uh, nothing, <laughs> <laughs> nothing would happen. Corruption appears uh, to be uh, very, very heavy, rife in schools, especially at the level of the secondary uh, schools in Cameroon. Yes. Yes, I think, um, before even answering what you are saying, I think we have the prob there's a problem in this country, mm -hmm. the problem of time. Mm -hmm. Yes, the problem of time. We always act after. Mm -hmm. Corruption has always been a problem in this country. Ever since, in fact, ever since this regime took power in 1982, corruption has always been a problem. And... Instead of all looking for how we can solve the problem of corruption, we created CONAC, that is the National Anti-Corruption Commission, 
headed by uh, 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 Reverend Julian A. Massey Gams. I think it was a good initiative, but how efficient is Konak? Konak had not given a balance sheet to Cameroonians on the day-to-day -day management of the institution. That is, on how a, a, a government coffers is being managed. Today, they are telling you that they, 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 they have a campaign against uh, 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 some school institution. That is, looking at what principals or vice principals are doing uh, 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 as far as schools are concerned in Cameroon. The problem is the time. You do that is a good initiative, but the timing, three weeks after, Three weeks after, what happened in the month of September? How much has been collected by, 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 by these principles? How much has been collected? Why now? Why not even organizing? Uh, 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 why, why did Konana even come up with a, uh, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe an organization in the month of August for preparation of, of the school year to start in October? And, uh, and Mr. Kum Leonard, there's equally a problem. Before one week before school resume, there's equally a transfer in the Ministry of Secondary Education. Mm -hmm. One week before school resumption. And you see, most of these principals, what they do is, they will tell you, no, I will take this amount or this number. I will not take this number because I don't know if they are going to transfer me. It's a problem. And you transfer, maybe you move Mr. Mr. Fai, and, and, and who is the principal of GBHS, for example, and you send him to Bonaberry after collecting more than 30 million francs. Mm -hmm. You send somebody to replace him. What happened after that? What account has he given? This is called, this, this is making us to come back to what Camonas have been but saying. How, how, in, in, how, corrupt, how corrupt is our secondary uh, education in Cameroon? Yes, our secondary education is deeply co corrupted. Mm -hmm. Deeply corrupted. In fact, in fact, having a mission in secondary education in Cameroon is completely money. I've seen it. I'm not saying because I myself have been a victim. Okay. It's complete money. You if you have money, whether your child pass in this A or this B, what if a man, what, 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 what the French call concours entry, uh, uh, concours the entry and CZM, or going to for one, whether your child succeed or not, you have to give money. And everybody knows the amount. They will actually give 100,000 francs. So we say give 50,000 francs because I'm representing you. It is corrupt. And that is why we are saying that Konad, before, that is even before carrying out this activity, they could have decided that no, one week before, let's go to these schools and find out what is the balance sheet. I mean, what is the report? They have not come out with any report. You don't come out with a report and you just decide one day, after three weeks, that let's go out and see what is happening on the field. What happened after that? I'm sure after this commission or after this, uh, 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 now we'll use the massacre, Konad. Nothing will happen. There will be no publication. You will not see any principal being arrested. You will not see people giving account. Everything will just end like that. Believe me, you, Mr. Kumjo. Thank yes. you very much. But uh, what level can we uh, greet the corruption uh, in our secondary schools? Where and where do we find uh, these corrupt practices? Corrupt practices in our schools are at different levels. Mm -hmm. And the rate is alarming. I have been on the, on the field. For example, when you talk about the first stage, mm -hmm. let me use the case study because we have a system already. What are the principals doing? The government has helped to give food to the principals. Because when you say it's not take more than 50 per class, why are the principals telling you? Why you can they say admission has closed? Actually. They first will put that fear factor in you. So that if you want your child to most future among the 50 that they say is above, forgetting that two sheet, you have to go extra mile. Which means the mechanism is made whether you are the one who run after the prisoner, the prisoner run after you. Do, which means you become, the parents become vulnerable. My child needs to go to school. The prisoner tells you, no, it's a text from the minister. We don't take more than 50. Mm. So there's nothing I can do. So you are forced to pass either through a teacher or through a VP to look for 100,000 francs or 50,000 francs so that they come and do the gymnastic. Then the prisoner sits him as if his hands are clean. And you see the mafia goes on and on in this kangaroo system. Now, as I said earlier, when you go to a school milieu, for example, PTA, they'll tell you it's 3,500 francs. What do they do? When you are going to pay, they say pay 17,500. They say 1,000 francs is for your medical file. Who has seen a medical file in the institution? They tell you no, it's for your file, 1,000. 1,000 times, how many thousands of, of students in that school? You can imagine what we get. Yes. And these are monitors that go unnoticed because at the end of it, the calculation is done within the people, within the principals and the, 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 the VPs and those who are aware. 
Now, as I said earlier, when you go even at the normal fee, Mr. Liu, minister says school fees, first cycle is 75. Second cycle is 10,000. They don't say pay plus uh, what you call uh, charges. No. You pay as it is. But what is happening? The principals will tell you no. When you pay, people will plus 500 francs. If we assume that you're adding those charges, 75 will give you 150. And you're paying 500. Now, you can see that you don't feel it. 350 is per student. 350 times 5,000 uh, mm -hmm. students. You could imagine how much are coming about. That's money you don't account for. It's between the person that they call up to do the transfer of the mobile money because if you go like to JTS, they were doing it across the road. The, somebody just came in, they position it outside the gate. So you don't pay in school. When you come in school, they tell you no. Before you pay your PTA, pay your PTA first. You show side of PTA, then they show you now where the person is under a tree across the gate at JHS. Now that's someone was stationed by the school. And they tell you you don't pay 75, you pay 8,500 francs for charges. 500 for charges. Imagine that, assume that 150 is taken quite right by the, by the companies that are doing the charges. Take 350 times. I mean, so you can imagine that's corruption in that milieu. I'm, I'm citing. Why is corruption again in the school milieu? <coughs> the aspect of registration form. It is a mere photocopy form. A mere photocopy form. That is not costing. If you want to take times, how many thousands of children with a photocopy in school? It will not cost you up to 25 francs. And I tell you, it's a thousand francs. Why is a thousand francs? How do they do the corruption? First, that 1,000 times how many? 1,000 is their money. That way it's not in the school budget of the school fees. State is taking care of its own fee, 7, 5, 10,000. That's their own budget. Then you look at it, 1,000 is like nothing. 1,000 for admission form times how many? Now, in the school budget, visited in FACO, in down in Opex City, down Limbe. What happens is that you can, read, you can buy the form as many times as possible. You can buy the form, you apply, and you're not taken. You buy another form again. And then what do they do? In the corruption system there, they put up, they says, there's one of the form, photocopy form, the school stamp is round there, telling you this school, JHS this or JHS that. Then away from that, you have a stamp, physical stamp of 1,000 francs, which is on it. There's another form again, that comes on it. This physical stamp is not there, but it's only a signature. That form is still 2,000. That's, they call it this physical stamp, plus the form itself, 1,000, that's 2,000. Now, if it was issue of physical stamp, no problem, that one goes to the state. But now, out of 5,000 students, you have physical stamp on about uh, about 1,800 of those forms, and the rest, you have all this nature by hand. And so 2,000 comes in. How do you account for that? That is still a part of corruption. Now, the annoying part of it is the fact that for the PTA, no general PTA meeting has ever met. I said none. Now, let me get you to Lise Nilong on, on another aspect here to show you how the issue goes on. Now, what happens? If you look at what transpired last year, what happened was that PT was connected to a team of 11, 115 million, 197,000. Now, what happens? We discovered for last year, we did not finish the school year. We wasted about three months, was cut off, I think from April right to the end. And now, in this, that money that was collected was not exhausted. Now, no school has been able to give an account that we have balance left. They have come back this year and put in place new PTA levy. The question now is, we asked about the accountability of the last one. No school is giving their salary from square one. You could see how the corruption goes on and on. So at the end of it, you realize that they have what they call executives that are manning the PTA now. No longer, no general assembly. They don't need, to, they need people who are loyal. So when you come with the money they collect, you are able to make the mafia, and then they remove small expenditures and tell you we have so many things to do with expenditure. That's how you see the swindle the whole money. And this thing is done in connivance with the delegates because if delegates are not aware, Principals will not involve. They give receipt there. Eh? You pay the, it's not like it's not hidden. As you pay 16.5, 19.5 for the case of those other schools, some 20,000 francs. If you are paying for a bench, you pay a bench, money equivalent to a bench, and they give you a receipt that you are paying for a bench. So ask yourself if the receipt are being given out and nobody is saying anything, it means that the schools themselves, including the medical file, you, just call them, you don't see any medical file, but they collect 1,000 times thousands of students. So you could imagine that it's a carefully planned act. And because the delegates are not coughing, the who, delegates pays, are, who pays for the benches? No, they say you pay for the bench. The school in Mutene, the, the principal knows what I'm talking about now. You pay for a bench. When you come and say, as you're coming for admission, please, you know, they, they, we don't have space here and we need enough benches because you know it's too shift. And so in that case, please, you have to pay. You pay for a bench. Receipt is issued. You pay for money equivalent to a bench because they tell you we have a school carpenter who, who will uh, produce that bench. And so, 
How many people pay for a bench? And our school is going, how many new benches will you find on campus? That's the question. Thousands of students pay for benches, and you can't, you will not get more than 20 new benches. It tells you that the mafia continues. And why do we say that, like we're saying here, like my, my co panelist kindly said, that if you look at it, something is surely wrong somewhere. Why is it wrong? Because somebody collects this money, divisional delegates are quiet, regional delegates are quiet. We are going to come to that. We are going right. to come to that. Aquin, um, do you think that uh, all of this, because what he is enumerating is not new? It's been going on for decades now. Uh, do you think that uh, a blind eye has been given all these years to all these corrupt practices in in the school milieus, a school, um, an industry that is supposed to mold future Cameroonians? Yes, Mr. Kum, I will tell you because this same campaign was being launched by Konak last year, 2019. Okay. Mm -hmm. It was being launched in Yaoundé. And the same initiative they are like preaching was mm. being carried out in four schools in Yaoundé. Mm. But still nothing happened. This is the beginning of a new year and we hear echoes of, you know, schools that are asking benches from students and parents, PTA money being increased and all that. So I think all what my co-panelist is saying is true and there is like i can say it's a chain and the deaf ear is natural because they cannot fight themselves it's a chain when i take i give my superior and it's 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 like it's it's a continuous issue so i will tell you mr Combe, it's 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 a world organized way of stealing from the poor cameroonians which we are yeah but uh of the not only connect the society are they uh not also encourage this by not uh, constantly denouncing it the problem with us i can say us the civilians the society as we are the truth is we are under we are we are under pressure mm. for example like a parent who takes his a, a parent who takes his his child to school and when you arrive there you want to give your child education you want because the best thing a parent can give a child is education mm -hmm. you will fight at all means for your child to be admitted in one school or the other so when you arrive there you are like you know they put you under what we call in french le chant they say if you do not buy a bench your child wouldn't go to school mm. your child wouldn't be admitted in this school so you are forced to do that and let's say denouncing it we denounce it every day i saw a parent crying out the government has said what would the government do nothing it is a corrupt regime that has been it is something that has eaten deep into the marrows of the regime so we are just like vulnerable there is nothing we can do we are just bearing because we want our children to go to school. We want our children to have education. And we are powerless at some point. The only thing we can do is like come to media and cry out if they can hear us. If other like international bodies can hear us and, you know, do something. But the thing is, we are very vulnerable. We are very uh, vulnerable. Why has uh, this situation uh, been overlooked over these years? Yes, I think um, I, will, I cannot say it has really been overlooked. Yes, I, I don't want to use that word, Mr. Kum Leonard. Mm -hmm. It's true. Um, you see, the system in place, mm -hmm. yes, the system in place, they know exactly what is going on. They are aware, as uh, 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 I should use the term, overlooked. Overlooked how? Because they feel that there's nothing Cameroonians can do. They know very well that communists cannot do anything. I've seen a case. I've seen a case where they tell you, if you care, you go and report. They tell you, if you care, you go and report. They even tell you, you go to these schools, they write their CONAG number, mm -hmm. 1715. That's they write it there, CONAG number. You go to the gendarme, the police, they write it there, CONAG number. But you are surprised, you call the number, Mr. Kum Leonard, nobody is speaking. At times, the number is not even going through. I've called Konak number many times, in many different occasions. I'm saying that because I'm a co-founder in an institution. I have a school. You see, parents will come, they will tell that, please, uh, there is no means. I've seen a case where a parent... A parent, uh, 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 the child of a parent succeeded with a lease, but they tell you that no, it is overcrowded. It is overcrowded. And what are you going to do? You are forced to, that is, you see the little money that this woman has, you are forced to use every means to send the child to another school because you discover there's nothing you can do. The government has given a blind eye. 
Why? Because they know that Cameroonians are vulnerable, like what my, uh, 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 my dear sister said. They know Cameroonians are vulnerable. There's nothing that Cameroonians can do, and they give you a death year. If you care, you call Konak. If you care, you go and meet a divisional delegate, or you go and meet a regional delegate. If you care, you go and report to whosoever, even to the chiefs. They are aware. We should not behave here as if we, as, uh, that is, Cameroonians or those who are managing us should not behave as if they are not aware about the situation. They know. Even the ministers, even the judges who are watching us right now, they know exactly what is going on. You go and report to the divisional director, they will tell you that no, you see, they are going to call the principal. Before you realize that the principal of the delegation is coming to visit him, they will prepare every place, arrange the school, uh, that is, paint the entire building, and they know that they are going by with their envelopes. That is why it has been overlooked. Who is going to fight for us? <coughs> Cameroonians are powerless. Cameroonians are speechless. Who is going to fight for Cameroonians? That is why it has been overlooked because they know that Cameroonians cannot do anything. Okay, Cameroonians are helpless. Let me take a few messages. Uh, good evening to you. Esther watching us from Kumba. Uh, good evening to you, Mr. Liu and Panel Jenny is writing from Yaoundé. Uh, corruption in our educational system like seriously alarming our country is regressing instead of uh, growing ahead i don't uh, really know where this country is heading to especially in our school uh, milieu <coughs> uh, Liu and crew good evening let uh, konak come to gths to tico because pt levy there is too high they have been collecting this twenty thousand francs per child for four years with no construction no PTA meeting from Charles in Tico. Uh, good evening to you, uh, Charles. Um, good evening, Mr. Liu, and you are uh, one of the chiefs who are fighting our lands. John is uh, writing from Yaoundé. Good evening, Mr. Liu. Are you one of the chiefs who are fighting our lands? John is writing <laughs> from Yaoundé. <laughs> no, I'm not a chief, please. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Liu. Uh, to the panelists, uh, say hi to the kangaroo man. Mr. Liu, uh, to GTC Limbe is the same uh, pot soup, even that inclusive primary schools uh, known as Chantal Bia is also taking money from us. Esther is writing from uh, Yaoundé. Many messages from uh, Yaoundé uh, this, this evening. <coughs> Good evening, Mr. Liu and all in the studio. God bless you all. Kunak can never stop corruption because uh, they themselves are corrupt. You go to look uh, for admission and bribe is asked openly and when the so-called Kunak comes, they are bribed too. Every sector in this country is involved in bribery. What can we do? It's Birita writing from mile 6, Mankon, Bamenda. Good evening to you, Rita. Good evening, Mr. Liu. The country is upside down. We need a new government now. Tagen Donatien is also writing from uh, Yaoundé. Um, many persons watching us this evening from uh, Yaoundé. Good evening, Mr. Liu. Um, Francis from Kumba. In Kumba, they are asking us uh, 25,000 francs for PTA. Good evening, uh, Mr. Kum. Kudos to you all in the studio. This situation is a recognized, legalized method of stealing accepted, accepted by the state. The state is aware because uh, they expect an envelope from each school. They visit even with their with their outstation allowance. Kangaroo sh shithole country in Gum is writing from uh, Bermenda. Greetings, Mr. Liu. And the panelists, Konak is just going for their own share of the money extorted by from parents. Do you inform a thief before arresting him? Honestly, we are being ruled by okay. Uh, Mercy Mech is writing from Bambui and Bermenda. Uh, to me, it's like Cameroon is under a spell. Barry Blink writing from Batibo. Okay, um, <coughs> now, parents themselves, are they not helping in this corruption in our schools? Be they primary schools, because uh, you will complain that um, teachers are asking for money for, for handwork, but the parents are the ones giving the money. Mr. Liu, I am talking as someone who has been on the ground. Today, I was at the Intercompressive College. I've been at Jetas Bokwango. I've visited a number of schools. Mm -hmm. What I realized is simple. The 
parents have been made vulnerable. Okay. I'll keep saying this. How can the state, Yaoundé, explain to me that you want children to go back to school in the Northwest, Southwest, at the same time you don't tell principals to uplift PTA, which is what is, is, is an impediment for the parents to pay. Some are even very difficult to pay the 7-5. And then the condition is that you must pay the that is you you pay the PTA before you pay the fee because the PTA is a prerequisite for you to get fully in a school in Moliko, a technical high school. I'm still coming. I don't want to go there because I am still with them. What happens? They tell you that please, if you don't pay your PTA and your fee, don't blame us if you come. And your name is not on the list. Vulnerability. What do you call that vulnerability? A parent start thinking, hey, but if I don't. And the principals give you the impression that the classes are full already. So if you don't do, not that people, many people are coming, if you don't comply with your PT and your fee, and you come and say your name is not on the list, not that you are, you are, you are fulfilling your mission, you go elsewhere. Imagine a parent who has already maybe relocated to that area, now the child is in that school. The parent will be doing everything possible to fight to pay the PTA and the fee so that the child's name will not be off the list and replaced by another one who is standing by. Vulnerability. So it is a careful, worked out plan between the principals and their bosses around the corner. That's why I said that, why are parents? The parents want to say to us, why are they running to us? Because they tell you that the way it is, first, they are afraid that their children could be stigmatized in school. First of all, they don't have that unity, because first, they don't even give room for PTA to be holding on the pretext of COVID-19. Before COVID-19 even came, PTA guardian was no longer holding. The school administrators had re reduced PTA at the level of executive members, president, treasurer, financial secretary and principal finished you could imagine how it was being run a school that if you take for example Gamba school Moliko, if you have more than six thousand students it means that if they are to come for a pta you have more than twelve thousand parents no that's mother and father obviously so but if you look at this situation the parents as you talk about they are very why the time they used to have a pta remember in those days we used to have a general pta where parents will come and it will be hot. Yes. They are brave. So you know, this money is much. Mm -hmm. And then they'll go by voting. When the majority say, okay, and they will pay me 5,000 francs. Yeah, but, uh, but things have changed. In, in GTHS, uh, Tico, somebody says they're paying 25,000, 20,000. And who is um, adopting this budget? This is where I said that. Let me explain to you that divisional delegates are suspects and regional delegates. Because I said, as I said, principals cannot have that courage to institute this money alone. Now, you are asking a good question. I said before now, no PTA meeting has held. Because if a PTA meeting was to hold, the PTA pair would have asked, can you account for what was paid last year, since the school ended prematurely, and we paid almost the same amount that we are paying now? It would have caused a lot of alarm. But that one has been siphoned, the coffer has gone underground. Now, in this case now, who is calling the shot? The principals call the shot with their so-called PTA presidents, who are part of the corrupt kangaroo network. And when they do this, they only give feedback to the divisional delegates and the original delegates. And they stay quiet as if nothing is happening. And collection endorses, is endorsed. I said that, Mr. Leo, how do you explain that we want people to go to school? In the case of Limbe, uh, Boya, and Tiko, you bear with me that most of the parents there have, uh, the children who have relocated from the, the, the war zones, at Mbonge, Ekono Titi, and all the like into these areas. Now, you discover that why they are batting to leave, if the government was not a government of juxtaposition and confusion, the communication would have been clear. Please, no PTA this year. Well, so you will allow the person to only come and pay their 7-5, even if they are adding 505 for charges, which is still another theft in disguise. But it would have been better. But now that the, 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 the school, the minister stays quiet, regional delegates stay quiet, and the delegates stay quiet, it means that it is a network whereby a parent who... Are, Imagine their parents have two or three children in their houses, and all of them have to go to it. If you are going to this GT, uh, government high school in, 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 in Mutegene, I mean in Tiko, technical high school, just take if you have three children, 20,000 times three, some even ask 25,000 francs. That's not even the fee. That's money that you could even start advancing for a private school for fee, and the children start going to school. Now, look like the school I went to, like uh, for Inter, for example, I was surprised they don't take PTA. That's a private school. They don't collect PTA. I was yeah. a little surprised. Yeah, but are they supposed to take PTA in such schools? Private schools collect PTA. We were talking about situations why should, here. Why should they? What so, for? No, I, said that I was a little surprised. They don't even collect. But now on the aspect of the government, my worry was, we're talking the right day here, we said, if schools in the hinterlands could collect because they know that probably have only two or three government teachers. And even when they collect, they don't collect more than 5,000 francs in those rural areas. So what justifies collection of 20,000, 16, mm -hmm. 
19,000 and other in other areas. Okay. Uh, the corruption is very high. It's a whole network that must be dismantled. Good evening to you, Koi uh, Waters and uh, watching us from Boya, and to you, Engager uh, Bricks, uh, also watching. Now, let's consider the situation, uh, prevailing situation in the southwest and northwest uh, regions, and even students who, who have come from these regions into the other parts of uh, uh, the ten or the eight other regions of uh, Cameroon. Uh, do you think that the government was supposed to? Uh, put in place some special dispositions for these children given the financial situation of parents from these two regions? Uh, Mr. Leona, I will tell you uh, normally normally um, as these because children... As we speak, these two regions have been, uh, uh, have been declared a disaster, economic disaster zones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I will tell you, Mr. Leona, normally the government was supposed to, like, as they organized their Grand National Dialogue, and they said they were supposed to give these this, um, war zones a special status. Mm -hmm. Normally, at the level of education, too, they were supposed to give some special treatment to these children who left the war zones and came here to find rescue or to find education. Mm -hmm. Normally, the government was supposed to, like, even why not give initiative for them to go free without fees? Mm -hmm. it's, it's normal. It's possible. They were supposed to ask these children not to pay fees they were supposed to organize like campaigns to give out books like um, educational materials for to facilitate these children going mm -hmm. to school mm -hmm. if really they really want these children to go to school or if really they want these war zones going back to school that really would have showed that they are really serious with their with their with what they are preaching i saw one um video of uh, i think it's a deal who was saying if teachers do not come and teach in the southwest, their salaries will be cut down. What are the advantages? What, why are you trying to? To me, it's like they are trying to, at, the, at every point, the government is trying to frustrate everybody. The government is trying to show it's like I am a Goliath. I command. There is nothing you can do. Because as for the CONAC, if I can say, CONAC is supposed to be an independent institution that was supposed to take, in, take um, that was supposed to like, take charge of the corruption in Cameroon. But let me tell you, Konak is part of the regime because at the head, it was created by His Excellency President Paul Bia. He's the one who says what happens. So naturally, Konak can do nothing. And naturally, too, the government was supposed to give these children who left war zones or children who are in these war zones a special treatment at the level of education. They would have redrawn like the PTA. They would have redrawn so many difficulties to enable these children go back to school. Okay. Uh, if, if not, uh, not cancelling the payment of fees in these two regions, why not at least take away the PTA fees? Yes, I think um, taking away the PTA fees will have been a very good initiative by the government. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have been the government of the schools. PTA mm -hmm. is parent teachers association. Yeah, the parent teachers uh, association. Yeah. Yes, it's true. They, they, that is uh, actually this association level. Like you were saying before, Mister Mister Five is supposed to be independent. Is the government not even have a hand inside? Yeah, they, but who says the government has a hand in it? No, no, the problem is the problem is today. When I say the government have the hand in it because the principals have a say, the big say. I've seen a case where principals decide who to be the pres president of PTA. Yeah. I've seen a case like that. Many yeah. principals tell you that no, that is they organize a small meeting amongst them and they tell you that this is the person who's going to be the PTA president. Now, when they come in front of parents, the voting is being manipulated. I've seen it. I'm not saying because of, I don't, I'm not talking because of, I've, those, are, those are witnesses. I've seen cases like that. Actually, the PTA was supposed to be free. The principal don't have a say concerning the PTA. You know, that, that is, they're supposed to present the fact that this is the person that we, the parents, have tried to be uh, uh, maybe our representative with you, the school administration. That is to say the PTA. But today it has been, the PTA is, uh, it has become a small political organization in the school milieu. How do you, how do you expect the PTA to be efficient and effective? It is, it, 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 it cannot go. People are coming inside to manipulate the PTA. And that's why you see, as far as time goes on, the amount increases. They will tell that last year it was 15,000, this year is going to be 17,000. Yeah, yeah. You see, it keeps on. Why? Because people are manipulating. There are people, there are blacklists inside. Mm -hmm. It is not. That, that, that is, if PTA is not independent, what more of Konak? 
What more of Conrad is to tell you that in this country there is nothing. Everything has been politicized in okay. Cameroon. Even the picture is a political organization in the school milieu. Yeah. Actually. It has been, Mr. Kumlu, that we should okay. not give a blind eye. It's a very serious problem. Very, very serious problem that if something is not done, very soon as I'm talking to this TV station, PTA is going to be a political party. They will tell you that we have to register maybe uh, uh, most, uh, 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 your national identity card, you have to register to do whatsoever. Maybe during elections they are going to vote whatever political party. Okay. It has been okay. a political organization. Okay. I'm sorry to say so. Uh, Kunaki is a failure when I wrote uh, against the late chief of uh, Muya village and nothing was done. Land grab by him can be estimated. Okay. The upper Muya indigenous people they didn't get up to five thousand square meters about five hectares to the best of my knowledge Konak has failed okay I'm called Maurice Ngwandi Nango from Opa Muya good evening to you uh, man from Grong <coughs> good evening Mr. Liu the country is upside down we need uh, a new country in order to stop corruption Francis from Yaoundé good evening to you uh, Francis Good evening, Mr. Liu. Let Kona come to Kas Kumba. Uh, many stories are coming from Kas Kumba. Now we are going to also do a fact finding mission for Kas Kumba in the days ahead. Uh, good evening, Mr. Kum. It's Kum Kenneth uh, writing from Mutengene. Good evening to you, uh, Mbombo. Yeah. Good evening, sir. Moses writing from Boya. My brother paid 33000 and and they give him a receipt for 27 thousand at gtc which gtc uh, specify is it in boya or where <coughs> hi to all i am in support with the lady who said in is a whole chain everybody right from the presidency knows what is going on in fact they are even promoting all these corrupt practices i disagree with the with the idea that there is nothing we can do because we can do something the solution Oops. This is the only solution, but Cameroon, the solution to all these issues is national uprising. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Monzi is writing from uh, Kumba. Good evening to you, Monzi. Good evening, Mr. Leo. Corruption is one of the legalized activities in our country. No matter what we say, it can't change anything. Kizitu. Is writing from uh, Bomenda. Good evening to you, Kizito. Good evening, Mr. Liu and panelists. Uh, criticisms can't be done, but not necessarily using the wordings of uh, Mr. Evis. His choice of words make him look okay. We have to be considerate, even in criticism. Quine Bless is also writing uh, from Yaoundé. <coughs> Good evening, Mr. Liu. Uh, and the panelists are pleased. The idea of the buying bench is alarming. Can you imagine that in Lycée Bekoko here in Douala, for for their, they are collecting 40,000 francs per child for bench before admitting your child. Please, we need help. The corruption is too much. Rene is writing from Bonaberry. This one says, uh, good evening, Mr. Liu. It's Ephraim from Kumba. Sir, it is a ganged up regime. The PTA is helpless in the hands of the supervisory authority, the principal. Then there are about 9 to 11 illegal collections from pictures through T-shirts to what you have. In addition, the charges ask for uh, MTN charges. So, Konak should sh shut. No, okay. <clears throat> Konak is a too less bulldog. Hello, Mr. Liu and panelists. Your program is very educative. Keep up the good work in sensitizing Cameroonians. My regards to Mr. Bembi Teodo Bokwe James, writing from Dombe. Good evening, Mr. Liu. I love your topic of today. Thank you. Hello, <coughs> Mr. Liu. I love your program. I am Ketu Roland from Bamenda. Due to the crisis in Abakwa, I went to GBHS Bachwa in Bambutus in West Region, was asked to pay 40,000 francs for registration before paying another 35,000 francs again for fees. Please greet Mr. Far Elvis, okay? Good evening, Mr. Liu. For me, 
for me cannot Konak does not have any power of his own john is writing uh, from kumba the messages are so so many now what you could not do to prove its worth as we speak um what Konak should do while replying on the, one of my uh, friend who just ran said choice of words and other like and uh, just to remind the person about choice of words, i don't have any choice of what to give here because i use money to go to the field and investigate if he knows what it takes to go to the field I don't move on the budget of any school to go there to investigate. I use my personal money. You cannot use personal money to go and see. You go and see things that are abnormal. You come and cajole hoodlums who are hiding behind. You get the point. Now the officers are doing their job. Our own here is that people who are walking behind them should be able to be exposed. Because if we don't do that, it means that my movement round because we still have part of Mehmet to cover. We, we have been called in charge. We have a day. There are quite other areas we have to go. We didn't. 14 days it's not biscuit as the young man is staying there or it's an old man or whatever so we have the right to get angry because we use money to uncover things that are not supposed to be there when parents are suffering now what is supposed to be done for konak the only thing konak can do if konak decides because konak is late but we say it's better to be late than never so what we think is that konak is supposed to put in place a measure if konak means business First, they're supposed to put in place a platform, a network where people follow you with information. Mm. We're hearing about Bikoko here. Mm. The other we heard about Bomono. 40,000 was created at Bomono. This is why we hear 40,000 at Bikoko. And you know the situations in the French speaking era is worst because of the angle impunity. Mm. I was talking about here the case of Lise Bilen Nilong Dogbasi. Mm. That case is in my phone here, sent to me by with documents, not only without documents. And you could imagine that. With the case of uh, this kind of school, you realize that as per last year, the money they collected, no accountability has been done. So what is the issue? Konak is for us supposed to go to the school's run, ask for accountability for last year's budget. If you don't ask it, it's an error. You cannot be collecting money for this year when school ended prematurely last year and people have not counted the budget spent. It means that you have encouraged investment. Now, if you look at the balance sheet we have here, plus documents, Sign. We have here a uh, commissaire de compte, commissaire au compte. We have here the president or uh, president of the RPA. Signed also by the principal of that lycée Nilong Dokpasi. You discover that something is wrong somewhere. And we are told that in the course of even the election of uh, uh, they had to put in place executive members, it was not Wahala because the school was influencing who will be the president of the PTA. And so at the end of it, the accusations are many. So I think that for Konak, if Konak wants to do a job well, Konak, hear me well, well. Before you start justifying your expenditure of your budget around the 10 regions, which I know you are only justifying, help us for the right to the principals to give you a comprehensive understanding of the expenditure of last year. Because you cannot be collecting money this year when we had some months off last year, which means some budget was supposed to have been saved, and you're getting to the new one. If Konak is doing this with a comprehensive report, then they put in place investigation. Because every principal could call the PTA chairman and the treasurer, they put up fictitious list. Do you know that even now, Konak is supposed to find out? Because for the parents teacher association, the money is supposed to be collected by treasurers and the financial secretary of that association. When school is being they're supposed to be in school. When you pay a fee that way, you can be paid to them, they collect and give you receipt. Receipt stamped by the PTA treasurer and financial secretary. But do you know all the schools now, the PTA is paid at the level of the bursa. It means the government is collecting the fee. Because the bossa is working for the state okay. and not working mm. for the PTA. If bossa are collecting the money, it means that that money has been decided by the principals and then instructed the bossas to collect. Many okay. things I'm are wrong. Sure, I'm sure the principal is working uh, with uh, the PTA president. Eh? No, if you work with the PTA president, it's a network because where is the treasurer to come and collect? Why would the PTA president allow but bossa to collect? The PTA president is supposed to send the treasurer of the PTA to come and see one area and it's collecting while the boss is collecting his own. <laughs> but now this the boss are collecting, the mafia is so long. Maybe it's the too, list is long. It's to facilitate the collection uh, process. Hello, Mr. Liu and the team in the studio. Please, uh, this thing we call corruption is an appeal letter used by the parents to obtain facilitation for the children's educational advancement. In 1987, we were already going through this and I think something should really be done about it. PTA stands for Principals Teachers Association. 
Pastor Brice is writing from uh, Douala here. <coughs> Konak should be able to put up commissions of inquiry, go to schools, and bring out uh, an inventory of what was collected and how <coughs> it was spent. Uh, sorry, not to find this evening. Good evening, Mr. Liu. I'm uh, Stena G. Writing from Bermuda. Last year, I paid 50,000 francs uh, to have an admission into a uh, seat. Lycée Tugebe, beyond the bribery in Cameroon is uh, terrible. Okay. <coughs> Good evening, Mr. Liu, and cool. Please, uh, we need help at Lycée Bileng, the Eko, Ekozok, Yaoundé 7. I had nine average, and I was asked to pay 25,000 francs to be admitted in upper seats. Please, Ekozok is something else now. I'm a victim and student here. Um, <clears throat> it's really uh, not good. Isa Jumia, please help us tell Konak that there is a ghost custom checkpoint at Sabga after Mamar contro control. You find mixed uh, gendarme and police calling themselves customs and they charge you depending on your goods. Konak, please do something. <clears throat> okay. Greetings to you all in the studio. Special greetings to the kangaroo man. He talks with facts. Your program is educative. Thanks for your coverage. The whole system is corrupt. The government cannot do without corruption. Michael is writing from uh, Kumba. <coughs> Good evening, Mr. Liu. Konak is part of the regime in Pa. Okay. Good evening, Mr. Liu. The back to school has come to cause pain and shame on the common man. How can a villager send his kids to school when he is living elsewhere as an IDP for the back to school campaign? To be successful, all schools should be free and adapting materials provided <coughs> provided the government is still taking the little left from us. Luis is writing from Yaoundé no from Tico, sorry. Good evening, Mr. Liu. It is not uh, just only about the corruption in secondary and primary schools. What about the corruption involved in gaining admission into higher institutions like ENAM, ENS, and certain others? Is this commission going to investigate about the corruption going on in these higher institutes of uh, when is Kona going to set another commission specifically for higher institutions? Martin Luther is writing from Turkey. <coughs> Muhammadu writing from uh, Yaoundé says, Good evening, Mr. Liu. Please, I will expose some people. Please. Uh, okay. <coughs> uh, good Good evening, Mr. Liu. So called Konak cannot stop corruption because it was created by the father of corruption. A lion will only give birth to the lion. Kazam is writing from Bomenda. <coughs> Can Konak turn things around? Uh, Akwen. Mr. Liu, that question is really very funny because right from the beginning, I told you Konak is an institution that was that came to life. Mm -hmm. be, uh, that came to life by the president. Mm -hmm. His but you see, you see the pressure. Almost everybody is anxious. Actually, wants to see Konak do something. Can Konak uh, meet their aspirations? Can Konak turn things around? and rebrand itself. Konak can never be rebranded. Konak can never change because Konak is born from a poison regime. The head is the president. The regime has been poisoned. How do you want Konak to work against its boss? It cannot happen. The boss of Konak is His Excellency President Paul Bia. And the truth is, Konak can do nothing. They are following instructions from their boss. Okay, let's just say, for example, Konak wants to denounce a principal. The principal is part of the regime. So how am I going to denounce my brother? It's impossible. Kona can do nothing. The only solution is we are going to suffer like this till the regime comes to an end. That's the only. That's the only. That's the only. Uh, 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 um, that's the only answer to this equation because there is nothing Kona can saying, do. Are you saying? Are you saying that if you were to be called up by Kona to give an advice to them, you won't? Uh, you would tell them that I have nothing to tell you. Can't you? Uh, giving an advice to Konak is like throwing water on cocoa leaf, as we see. It's impossible. Why? 
because it is part of a regime. It is a poisoned, chained regime. It has been poisoned right from the marrow. There we've is seen, nothing. We've seen, we've seen people who've uh, been taken because of uh, the exposure of Konak. Hmm. I don't think so. Because I read one newspaper that said um, Ephraim Enoni was being given 20 years imprisonment because of Konak. I don't think it's, 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 it's a political issue. It's not like Konak, like anything of embezzlement, operation, epilation. No. It is a political issue. It is a political battle between the president and his friends, if I can say. So Konak has nothing to do with that. Konak can do nothing. It is, the regime is poisoned. Konak can only react when the regime comes to an end. And the party on power is going to like, okay, let's, let's try our own. Like we can, we can rebrand Konak after the regime comes to an end. But for now, Konak can do nothing. Yeah, you talk like uh, Konak members are, are civil servants. We know that uh, that that organ is headed by um, <coughs> a bishop. Yeah, yeah, it's rather it's headed by Reverend Doctor Judone. Mm. But what? How do I? How do I believe that he's not part of the regime? Being a man of God does not give you the the ability of being out of the regime. You're part of the regime. Mm -hmm. If His Excellency President Paul Biya could put him at the head, it means they are eating at the same table. They are friends, and they need to discuss. So Why don't you think that uh, the government may be disappointed in Konak's inability to deliver? The government is not disappointed. The government is simply applauding it because with all the denunciation, all the cries, the, the drums are being hit loud. The government is doing nothing. He's giving a, a deaf ear to all this. The government has never risen like, say, okay, we, have, we, we, we go down to this school. Like the, the, the minister of uh, um, secondary education, has she ever gone down to a school and she said, okay, let me go to these schools that are crying, PTA, 40,000 and all that. What has she done? The government is not disappointed. They are part of the regime and they are continuing what they planted. It is a seed they planted and they are harvesting. Many persons are decrying the exorbitant amount uh, requested for uh, the PTA levies. Uh, <coughs> is this not also making life very difficult, especially in uh, these conflict stricken southwest and northwest regions where we want our parents, uh, we want children to go to school and uh, principals are. Uh, saying that you must pay this amount it is you have made it there's a problem you see making life difficult it's not making life it is making life more difficult mm -hmm. it is making life more difficult and even complicated there's a lot of complication in those areas mm -hmm. imagine that you have you, you have given that is you have, you have limited the question to two regions the conflict hitting northwest and southwest people don't go to school since the 2016 Children don't go to school. Parents are lamenting. Now, Konak decide to make maybe a tour in those two regions to see exactly what is going on, whether what has been planted or whether the principals are following the normal rules of uh, 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 that is the normal rules that stipulates uh, 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 education in Cameroon. No. Now, when you come to the field and maybe that is you just want to flatter Cameroonians in the northwest and southwest region that i, I call it cosmet I, I, I call it uh, 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 that is just like a chameleon camouflage eh? it's like a chameleon that you change in yaoundé and you start to go to north and southwest and you present a, 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 another photo or another picture it cannot let me tell you something mr kumlo that we are talking about a two conflicted uh, 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 regions where i expected konag to come Maybe with the Minister of Secondary Education or with the Ministries of Education, Higher Education, Secondary Education, and even the Basic Education. They say, okay, we, for now we have to accompany you to this mission. Let's see if truly what, is, what we are hearing in Yaoundé, it is the reality. Let the decentralization apply there. Let's see decentralization in our educational system applied. Follow them, accompany them. When you accompany these people, what happened? Now, when the other minister is coming, or maybe the three ministries are, uh, 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 of, 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 of education, they are coming, things maybe things will begin to take another turn. And there's what we call accountability. When they discover any place, and we want, and, and we want to discover a problem, we don't go to the principal or to the divisional delegate. Yeah. You don't meet them. Go and meet the parents. Yeah. Go and meet the parents. Look for, look for, look for even ten cases. When you discover ten cases in the school, you know that this is a problem. 
And you call the principal into question, and you call the management of the school into question. Not only send them to prison, but you have to make sure they take back the money that they have uh, uh, taken by force to those parents. That is what we want. That is what we want from Konak. Don't just go, uh, or that's what we want from the government. Don't just go to, to, to the Norwest and Southwest regions, just turning around. And this very Konak, I'm sure those principals, they are watching us very, uh, uh, right now. They are going to take, Konak is, uh, uh, those principals are going to wear the lips of those uh, uh, Konak officials, I'm sure. They are going to give them envelope. Cameroon, we are very, we are very in Cameroon. Everybody knows it. When there's a mission that is living in Yaoundé, there's always an envelope. You know that, and you have to prepare this for for the connecting. That is not to say that there are no uh, principles that may be different now. Eh? Mr. Kumlunad, Mr. Mr. Kumlunad, as I'm talking to you right now, all the principals are collecting money. Mr. Kumlunad, in every government schools in Cameroon, mm. Northwest, Southwest, or the French speaking part of this country, all the principals, I have been, I have gone to government schools. I went to Lycée Blaine de Kumba. From, from three right up to upside. I know what I'm talking about. Every principal, every principal in government schools, it's a network. It's, it's, a, it's a complete network. It's Every a, principal in government schools, when immediately they say they made you a principal, you are very happy. You know that the time has come for you to invest. The time has come for you to enrich yourself. yourself. It is difficult. Every all the principals in this country, they know exactly what we are talking here. It is the reality, and nobody can give a blind eye. I think this is the time that we have to sit down as Cameroonians. This is the time that uh, 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 the principals or maybe the government have to look into the problem deeper. Those people in the, in the lowest, and some people are not going to school. Mm. Why not say like what Mr. Fire uh, 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 said earlier when we started the program? Why not saying that okay, not to PTA, okay. not to school, uh, uh, a payment of maybe Good. maybe fifteen or ten thousand francs. Children should just go to school to encourage back to school. Why there must be why must there be a back to school and PTA the amount keep increasing? They are still collecting money from parents. Okay. Why? Good evening, my brothers in the studio. I'm Gwen Emmanuel Cameroon. Sorry, sorry. Uh, Nguyen Emmanuel is writing from Bamenda. Good evening to you. Good evening, Liu and my Mbombo. Mr. Every schools in urban areas are well constructed, yet they pay high PT every year. The only thing they do is some few repairs of benches and renovation, which doesn't take place <coughs> every year. <coughs> For me, PT to be paid, the school has to come up with a project that they want to carry out before parents could pay PTA. Yeah. The PTA should not be paid every year in schools in the city that are already well developed. <coughs> Good evening to you. Uh, Mr. Leo, we love your program, but Konak launching back to school is uh, to targeting their own money from principals, okay? Ceci writing from Limbe says, what are people saying? Does America belong to America? Do you people sleep and eat? Well, does other do? Mm. As the private schools pay fees, they too are collecting their own fees. If rapture comes, many Cameroonians will go to hell. We need Papa God's hand. God, good morning, my dear children. The demon of power and money have entered the country. Ceci is writing from Limbe. Mm -hmm. Ceci, good evening. Good evening, Mr. Liu and, and Poka Joe writing from Modiko Boya. Let's stop waiting our time on Konak. The only solution is uh, regime change. Uh, good evening, Mr. Liu. The corruption is rooted in such a way that principals will not declare the real number of students in their school so as to divert school fees and PTA to their private pockets. Figure is writing from uh, Bermenda. Correction in Cameroon. Corruption in Cameroon is at all levels. Two weeks ago, the head teachers of the center region were called up to pay a compulsory payment of 18,000 francs to get a new scheme of work for primary and nursery schools. Meanwhile, <coughs> all the Minedu documents for the new curriculum are all free of any charges. Secondly, at the beginning of every academic year, all primary schools pay the sum of 20,000 francs to the head of zones of Yaoundé 5 for pedagogic uh, animation which if not given the teachers of the will not be able to let to attend the fully funded program. 
This thing called corruption has gained ground. Only the change of system can limit this. Worst of it all is that when you try to talk, you can't get the results of your school end of year exams in peace. <clears throat> Which means that the head teachers themselves are called upon to pay some money somewhere for uh, free services to be given. And good evening to you, Mr. Liu, and to the great talented panelists. Please tell me which commission has ever produced the most expected results in this country. I feel sorry for my dear fatherland, Cameroon. <clears throat> Jerum, writing from Bonga, says, Good evening, Mr. Liu and the team. A thief can't arrest a thief. Konak is made up of... Okay. <clears throat> Good evening, Mr. Liu. This is Hassan Ben Adam from Kribi. Can you imagine that uh, they have collected the sum of 27,000 francs for... My daughter in class one of GBPS Newtown here in Kribi. They say PTA is 15,000 francs for bench, uh, 7,000 francs, then 5,000 for medical certificate. Mm. <coughs> it's disheartening, actually. Good evening, Mr. Liu. I love the program. The truth is that our government has failed. Divine is writing from uh, Limbe. Good evening, Mr. Liu and the panelists. I wish to say that you guys are God sent. I enjoyed Mr. Fire Elvis for his logical argument. The government is not helping the poor parents in any way. Worse still is that some school collect up to 8,000 francs in the name of admission committee. Go to GTHS. Tiko Uncle Prince is writing from Bangem. <clears throat> um, Charles again, uh, Tiko Liu in GTHS Tiko, the principal gives priority PTA than to PTA than school fees because that is where they have to embezzle greetings to the kangaroo man. Um, <clears throat> very uh, shocking revelations here from almost all of the schools around to, to say that uh, going to school in Cameroon is not easy for an average uh, uh, Cameroonian parent. Well, you know, those are just the few you can get. Mm -hmm. Many are in the pipeline. Uh, so you could imagine uh, that it's a whole system cooked out. I mean, carefully carved. So you see, uh, people deceive Cameroonians that you want people to go to school. When in real terms, you want them to sit in class and you extort money from them. Yeah, but That's the scenario we're getting here. Yeah, but the government policy may be for everybody to have education, but we see that those in the education uh, uh, system... Mr. Leo. Uh, yes. It is not the government policy for everyone to have education. It's the government policy to lease with these school administrators to extort money from people. I'm sorry to say that. I've been saying that the intention of the government, the way things are moving, because they are quiet, until the government acts, before I will know that they are not part of this deal. Mm. But if they don't act, they are part of this deal. Because you cannot tell me that you preach back to school, back to school, as if you love the people to go to school. Mm. Where well, you don't love them to go to school. You want to come and sit in class. And then you pass behind the principals, insist that you should collect PTA. And then they are collecting PTA, you stay you quiet. The PTA money is distributed in the channels. It is same like what is collected on the road. When you get investigated on the road, you tell me that the uniform officers who collect money on the road is a whole channel that goes right to higher quarters. That's why no matter the 1,000 fans they will take, 500 fans will take on the way, case goes to nowhere. Because it is a whole chain from whosoever sent you. The person sends to another person that is responsible for keeping him there, mm -hmm. and the whole thing goes up. Okay. So, at the end of it, Mr. Leo, I think that the only way Yaoundé regime, hear me well, well, the only way you can vindicate yourself is if we hear that you are ordering a stop to eat, and you are ordering the money to be refunded. That's the only thing. The moment, this because they are already using the money now, I'm sure they have already Delegate will take this one. Regional will take this one. Regional will take this one. We'll keep this one in case Kona comes. This is the own package we'll give to them. Okay. I don't know, but I'm sure I've had that position. If not, if the government wants to vindicate themselves, we should hear communicate. Just like they talk about the phone tax. Mm. This thing has been suspended. <laughs> Two, you know the issue of Moliko, I talked about computer fee, some mm. years. When students block the road, they had to order, the regional guy at that time, ordered the principal to refund the 5,000 francs for computer fee. Okay. And it was done within 24 hours. Okay. That's good, what we expect the state to do. Good evening, panel members. So where is the is the concern? In Tico, precisely at GTHS Tico, parents who did not complete the fees before the break of COVID-19 have to pay all the fees at, of last year before paying of this year. Comfort is writing from Tico. 
I think uh, GTS Chestico mm. definitely no, is yeah. very problematic. Mm. Something is not GTS right there. And Cass Kumba. GTS Chestico, Cass, Cass Kumba, uh, yeah, and a host of others. Please love your program, but people who come to the table and shouting the name of government should first tell us they are parents and if they attend PTA meetings. Mm -hmm. We go to meetings and accept the amounts to be paid. <clears throat> okay. Uh, good evening, Mr. Liu. I am the Julius and IDP in Yaoundé. Thanks for the program. My problem is the PTA of GTC and Kol Volu Yaoundé. That amount of uh, 41,000 francs is too much for us. Konak team is more corrupted than the school authorities they informed before visiting any office. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, good evening, Mr. Liu. Konak is fake before Konak reaches a school an envelope is handed to them and all they do is to sit, talk, and sign books. Isaac is writing from Bamenda. Stop calling. Good evening. My name is Comfort from my four Limbe. Uh, we paid school fees uh, for last year. What is Kona going to do about it? Okay. Uh, good evening, Mr. Liu. Is Zaka writing from Douala Bikoko? I went to GBHS uh, Bikoko to register my child. I was surprised being asked a sum of 50,000 francs before a fees of 45,000 francs. Why some private schools are taking 80,000 francs? Yeah. How do you spend uh, that's 95,000 francs in a government school? We are going to take a short break. When we come back, we use the last uh, 30 minutes to discuss our second topic for this evening. Welcome back. You're watching Prime uh, on my media Prime. Out uh, there in uh, Nigeria, things are boiling, and uh, there is a campaign to end SARS in in Nigeria, championed by civil society act activists and uh, core musicians and artists involved in the likes of uh, Davido, uh, Flavor, and a host of others, uh, Cameroonians. Uh, now increasingly asking why artists in Cameroon have not stood up to the challenge calling for end of human rights abuse in Cameroon, especially with respect, with respect uh, to the ongoing socio-political crisis uh, rocking the southwest and northwest uh, regions. Um, <clears throat> is it a place for artists uh, to engage in denouncing uh, human rights abuses and calling for an end to uh, crisis like the one in the southwest and northwest uh, regions. Mr. Do they have a capital role to play? Yes, actually, um, artists are are like the voice of the voiceless. Mm -hmm. Artists, they are the ones who preach out our pain in their musics. So normally, Cameroonian artists were supposed to emulate the attitude or what the the the, the Nigerian artists took on the street. We have likes of Davido, we have likes of P Square. It means they had their country at heart. It is it is but frustrating to see Cameroonian artists keeping quiet to the socio political problems in Cameroon. Like in the northwest and southwest, this problem has been ongoing for like four years now, and we have seen no artist stood up to denounce these things. We only had like um, Longe Longe, who like stood up one time and he was like shut up by one Goliath because he stood up and like was talking against the government. But we see that in in Nigeria, we can say that their system is a democratic one. They are given the ability, artists are given the free will to denounce their plights. But in Cameroon, you, we are not in a democratic place where, you know, an artist will, will go out on the street and protest and at the end of the day, you, you go, you go scot-free. No, you'll be punished. The, the government will always look for a way to handcraft or handicap anybody who stands against them. That is why I think that's one of the 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 the, the, the handicapped ability for the mm -hmm. government using using their their power to close the mouth of the artists in Cameroon. But I think 
these Cameroonian artists should stand up, should stand their ground, should be courageous like the Nigerian artists, speak out because it is through them that we can, our voices can be heard, the voices of the voiceless, through their music, through their, their, their campaign, through their protest. I think they can help. Okay. Uh, they can help. Uh, <clears throat> what would change if artists were to get into this uh, whole dance in Cameroon? Yeah, I think, um, uh, first of all, for artists to even go down, because artists, they are recognized by Cameroonians. Mm -hmm. Yes, most of those artists, Cameroonians know them, the young Cameroonians who are in pain. Mm -hmm. And the problem is not just to sing for people to dance. Cases like what we are seeing in Nigeria is for artists equally to show themselves that we are there to make you happy because music is a foot of love. Through music, you can, you can, you can pass a message. Go down to the street, go down to Boya and Bamenda or to the Northwest and Southwest, cry to the government, preach this, uh, 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 the gospel that you have been preaching to your music. Say to Tambo, I'm talking, talk to these people what you want them to hear. Make the government equally understand because the news, because these same artists, they, they have been invited by the top ranking um, uh, members of government when they have a party in their houses. The point not just to go there, and most of these members of government, they know these artists. Why not go, like, 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 like what Mr. Luna was saying about the case of David and others. These are renowned artists in Nigeria. When they go to the street, it, it makes the world to know that there's really a problem. There's really a problem. Why, why can those artists not equally go to the street? You, I mean, you talk to Cameroonians, you pass on this message. It's not only the case in Nigeria, we have seen other countries. Even now, even the United States of America, when there's a problem, we see artists going down the street. Even in France, we have seen the Mexican go on the street because of this same police brutality. Even what happened in America uh, 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 early this year, where a black man was killed. Okay. Black Lives Matter. You saw artists; they were there. Not only artists, even even even, even, even footballers, they were there. They protested. They passed on their message. Up, up to is still, you go to stadiums in England, there's what we call Black Lives Matter, and you see artists or you see these uh, uh, footballers, they take up their, I mean, the, most of them, they have to respect uh, 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 what was said, or they have to respect the black man who died by passing on the message. So it is the time for artists or Cameroonian artists, when I say artists, musicians, to equally do the same. I saw, I think, that, uh, uh, maybe 2017 with, uh, with, with Salatiel, but to me it was not enough. They were just singing with like a debate. Huh? They, went, they were just singing, just calling on Cameroon. That, that was not enough. First, you go down, you think that you table this matter to the government. And the problem is, artists cannot equally do this. When I say artists, I mean, I talk about uh, 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 musicians. Because if you look at, uh, uh, is it the, 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 um, the, 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 uh, the organization they call it Société de l'Art Musical? Uh, I don't know, uh, in, in, yeah, Société de l'Art Musical, where all artists or, uh, uh, or, or musicians, uh, uh, that is an organization which they are formed. I don't know the, the, the acronym in, in, in English. Mm -hmm. But if you look at this, you discover that each time there's a problem in Cameroon, artists or musicians, they hardly come up or rise up to the occasion. Yeah, is it, is it, is it because uh, some artists have openly taken political stances already in in, Cam in Cameroon. We we know that there are parties, there are many artists who will tell you that I am Cypidian, others who say I am from, from Maurice Camto, I am, and this is uh, actually sapping them of uh, that uh, vitality to be able to stand up as an independent uh, arm to push for a common uh, cause. You know, the issue with Cameroon is that everything is politicized by the regime in place. Why do I say so? The artists would not easily come out like the way you find others in Nigeria for the simple reason that, first, the profession of music in Cameroon has been made in such a way that it is not even easy for you to go through and make the money where you can become international as you find with the Nigerian music industry. So in that case, you realize that those who manage to make it here are those who manage to stay cool and lean themselves with some CPD and barons in Yaoundé who could invite them once or two times per year in some particular event, mm. and then they pay them some millions that they use now in produce carrying out the other productions. So in that case, by nature of the things on the ground, the artists find it difficult to take that outward stand because if they're taking that outward stand, they'll be sure that all of those issues that has to do with anniversaries that you are supposed to be called up, you will not longer be a mark. Because imagine that they call for an anniversary, you just come there and sing one song for one hour, 
and you are backing home five million. Something which you have to organize a concert and stress mm. before you are able to get that kind of money coming up, which you will not even get up to that five million coming up. So at the end of it, the system, as I said, kangaroo, is shaped in a way that people will want to look at their interests in the first place. What do I stand to get? Loka Loka has tested it. Of course. If it's not that he had gathered some monies and made some contacts, well, after that, people had to assist him to come back. Mm -hmm. That would have been all of Longer Longer. That's true. That would have been all because from the, what he tried, fighting the system, the system mixed him very well, very and he confirmed that Kakino be led as a say in Pigeon. <laughs> and so at the end of it, if you tell him now to move, he is now cautious. Now, if it was not the sole lives of some other footballers and others abroad who had to come to his aid to inject money back into his career, it would not have been easy for him. So the system has all it takes to pin you down and make you remain poor. So it is a calculated political system that works even on the artists. Mm -hmm. Look at the current election that is even going on mm -hmm. in their music industry. Mm -hmm. It is politi politics is inside. People are somewhere who are the artists influencing who becomes the president, the president of, 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 of the whole system. Have, 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 so you can imagine that the, 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 at the end of it, mm -hmm. the only thing to get this country on is for a change of regime. Amen. Anybody that is daydreaming for anything good from Yaoundé regime now, that person needs to go and meet, and meet Baba to wash him well again. And then goes to church again. About 60 men of God, prophets, and prophets should pray for him, on, on him. If not, the man is not even a Cameroonian. Because the way we are now, Mr. Leo, I am sorry that we have been preaching day in day and not in day. It's, it's getting worse. You see the question I talk about corruption like that. Don't be surprised that some people will increase the money overnight again. Mm -hmm. And more corruption will be done. And nothing will happen. Mm -hmm. That's the system. Uh, immaculate hello um, uh, immaculate manka from kumba kona is helpless against corruption because it's being put in place by corrupt regime bad people immaculate uh, writing from uh, kumba good evening to you immaculate good evening uh, sir we cameroonians should set up and start doing things the right way every cameroonian should denounce unscrupulous actions in all sectors including schools parents of each school should hold the pta chairman and <clears throat> The principal responsible if they don't use their PTA budget well. Um, Collins Kajo is writing from Chang. Good evening, Mr. Liu, and greetings to all the panelists. More grace to your your able. Uh, special greetings to the kangaroo man. Adolf is writing from the United Arab Emirates. <coughs> Good evening, Mr. Liu, and panelists. Konak is a paper tiger, a dog back. Uh, that cannot bite. School principals cannot stop because the police are on the road collecting their 500 francs every day. Nobody is saying anything. Who don't know everywhere is the same. Ashu <coughs> is writing from Boya. Good evening. All government principals are not serious. Divine Gomez is writing from Limbe. Good evening and more grace to you all concerning schools like the handicapped. The government has given them fees exemptions, but you have to pay it to sign a form. And with crisis in Anglophone regions, one is not allowed to even to buy books. I'm able Clara writing from Fiangu in uh, Kumba. <coughs> Jerome is writing from Bengui. Good evening to you, uh, Jerome. Good evening, my brothers in the studio. I am okay. Good evening, Mr. Liu and the panel. The PTA of schools today are set up. How can one be a PTA president or member when your child is not the school in the school? PTA is being adopted at the General Assembly of both the teachers and the parents, not by principal. Elder Eric Ndakwa is writing from Boya. Hi, Liu. Good evening. Please read my message to the end. Mr. Faevis will agree with me that uh, the solution to all these issues is national uprising where the population in its totality is involved. <coughs> Monzi, writing from <laughs> Monzi. Aquin. Now, uh, we have seen the likes of Bendika. They have started with the uh, end the Anglophone crisis hashtag and it is taking a flare and many more persons are going is that already a, an indication that in the days ahead we may be seeing many more uh, musicians and other um <coughs> other um artists calling for an end to the crisis in the southwest and northwest 
Mr. Leonard, I will tell you, um, this is just a camouflage. It is just like masking issues, mm -hmm. because Bendeka, if I, if I, if my memory isn't forgetful, Bendeka is part of the regime. <laughs> He's part of the regime, and you know him decrying like decrying the crisis in in the northwest and south where He's just trying to give him that prominent name, like I was part. I I, I am trying to. I am trying to, he's, he's trying to get pro, a, a prominent name by attaching himself to trying to stop the Anglophone crisis. There is nothing he can do. He's part of the regime. And I don't think the regime is even trying to stop this Anglophone crisis because many of them are benefiting from this crisis. They are the ones, they are the mask behind, the, they are the men behind the mask who are fighting day and night that this crisis should not stop. So Bendeka is no different from the regime. So I don't think other artists will join him because if other artists even really have the will to join, they will be bankrupt. They will bury them. The government is always having a way of making you handicapped. The government is always having a way of punishing you for denouncing them. It is, it is a fight for personal interest. These artists are trying to, to put food on their table. Now, if they go to public protest or they try fighting the government, I tell you, they will go hungry. I tell you, your career will be put to an end. Okay. So you are telling Cameroonians that uh, they should not be hopeful that the artist will be able to to raise any any serious campaign. Yes. In Cameroon, there is no hope for the artists in Cameroon. Their hands are tied. Their hands are tied, and most of them, they are part of the regime, so they eat from the same pocket, from the same plate with the regime. So there is no way for them denouncing or going to the street and trying to fight their, their by the fingers that is feeding, feeding them. What should be the post posture of uh, artists in Cameroon now? Just observe. No, normally, uh, um, an artist is supposed to be a neutral body. Mm -hmm. An artist is supposed to be the voice. It's supposed to be the voice of the voiceless. But we can see in Cameroon that the, the position of the artist is a purely a political one. Mm -hmm. They have taken sides or they have chosen their camp where they can benefit, where their interest is being uploaded. Yeah, but we see many of them now coming up with the hashtags, eh? Uh, for the end, uh, end to the anglophone uh, crisis. It's simply a camouflage. It's simply masking things. A window dressing. Sure. Campaign. You think so too? That the the, yeah, the problem we're talking about Bendeka. <laughs> what age is Bendeka? Does it matter? No. Bendeka has already Bendeka has been for more than forty years in music. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. Is it too late? In to me, it matters. It matters. Bendeka is not a real model for other artists to follow. Artists will tell you that, yeah, Bendeka is my real model. But when it comes to issues like this, I'm sure no artist will follow Bendeka in this very hashtag. They will, um, they, the young artists, they equally want to make a name. Huh? They have that desire to grow. They will tell you, I've been more than 40 years in music. You have been in France, you have enjoyed your life. You are now in Cameroon. Who is going to follow you? He's not a model. Talking about Sokam, so take on the Lad Musical. They are watching us right now. That organization is even divided. We have seen the case of ben, uh, of of, uh, of uh, what is even the name of Ndedi Yango when the the former minister of culture was there. What happened? This is somebody that the musician voted to become the president of Sokam, but the minister refused. The minister has his own uh, 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 her own candidate, and everything just ended like that. Sokam is divided, and if Sokam is divided, which therefore means musicians in Cameroon they are not in one harmony. What do you expect, or how do you expect uh, 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 the artists or the musicians from the northwest and southwest to maybe beef up the campaign and to say no, no to this? What is happening in the anglophone crisis? Since 2016, right up to date, Bendeka, they are not seeing anything. Sokam is not seeing anything. They want to copy for what they are seeing in Nigeria. For how long are we going to copy, Mr. Kum Leonard? For how long are Cameroonians going to copy from outsiders? Why can we not come with our own initiative? Why? Why can we not tell them, no, this, this is a problem. Let's see how we can equally rise up to the equation and say no to this. Why must you look at what Nigerians are doing before we want you to emulate? For how long? 60 years of independence, Mr. Kumbi 60 years of independence. Nigeria is equally 60 years of independence. So each time we are going to spend, uh, 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 so we are going to spend time copying from others? No. I think that 
Whoever wants to come up with an initiative, like what the panelists have been saying about the case of Longa Longa, he was, I mean, Longa Longa, Longa Longa, we saw what happened. He even came to one million station here in Douala uh, with, with, with a renowned government official, and his passport was given to him. Mm -hmm. And everything remains silent. Where is that? Where, where are the lapiros? They rise up to a question and, and, and they say the government, no, this thing is wrong for many years. And what happened today? They are no more. The young artists, they want to enjoy life like what they are seeing in, our, in America. And they will tell you that, no, we cannot go for this. They will just do what they call a champagne match. Uh, going to Bamenda um, and Boya, making maybe a, a, a walk, maybe, maybe, maybe a, 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 a 20 meter walk, carrying placa, and that is all. We know this country. Okay, we know this uh, uh, country. This one says, uh, <coughs> excuse me. Good evening, Mr. Liu. I'm so much touched with your program of today. Based on the topic, both parties fighting does not want the crisis to come to an end, particularly the top-ranking officials within the government and the military. For example, Mr. Liu, the government have been singing that children should go back to school for the past four years, and it has been yielding little or no fruit. This year, the song of Back to School was never sung <coughs> in Muyuka and school resumed yesterday, Tuesday, after a strong sensitization and mobilization by a priest. Behold, the military came around claiming they are protecting the children and finally they shot and killed a civilian not far from where the school was operating, claiming they saw Banga <coughs> in his back. Why carry on such acts? But yesterday, that the school just resumed was killing the only option after he was caught. Muyuka has been for about a month or two without any gunshot. They scared the children. Today, Wednesday, most of the children are leaving the town to seek for knowledge elsewhere. We pray for the priest should not get tired, but to see how he can bring the children back. <coughs> Thanks. I'm Clement. Writing from Yaoundé. <coughs> Maxel writing from Dop. Cameroon government is uh, okay. It looks as if the government is confused. Marcel, good evening to you and the people of Ndop. Extend our greetings to the senior divisional officer for Ngoku Tunja Ketong Handison. Good evening, Mr. Liu. Seriously, I think your panelists uh, tonight are very biased and kind of stereotype in their reasoning. Excuse my expression. Not everything in Cameroon is political. Simply because someone is not from the Northwest and Southwest doesn't mean they don't care about the nation. <coughs> Sylvie is writing from uh, Boya. Good evening to you, Sylvie. Uh, Sylvie, um, I don't know. Good evening to you all in the studio, Mr. Liu. A blind man cannot lead a blind man. Konak is being put uh, by the corrupt regime. So what else do you expect themselves to receive bribes? Zantu. Is writing from uh, Dubai. One makes me laugh is when they give them the new post, relatives will dance till they break this money. Now I know why they become so happy. Mr. Liu and friends, God bless all of you. <coughs> Mr. Liu, will the artist not be put in prison? Okay. <coughs> Uh, good evening once again to you too, writing from Limbe. <coughs> good evening, Mr. Liu. I think we have to conquer fear till the day the population will go against injustice. Nothing will change. Jarvis is writing from uh, Limbe. <coughs> good evening, Mr. Liu. I am an artist by name Mafia. We have we little to say in music about the Yaoundé regime because we no legal back we have no legal backing okay <coughs> it seems to be very uh difficult for the artists in cameroon eh? no very very extremely very very difficult you know uh the first of all the, 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 as i said the environment under which the operate is very harsh mm -hmm. if you take nigeria or you take south africa you realize that even in their home in their in their music industry they have what the call from the government mm. Now, there are some people, if you don't have money to put up music, you could move to the government with your demo, and then they listen to it, and then the government co-ops one or two business persons that they know work within that industry, and they, and, they, and they give you a push, and you move up. If you look at the issue of uh, Two-Face Ejibia, for example, he was not having the money, 
He only made Kenny's music, the producer. Who told him, okay, I know you don't have money. I, I've listened to your lyrics. It's okay. I'm going to work on it. And then, before you know it, boom, two faces has gone. Now, the environment matters a lot. That's why I said that anything that you do, government policy has a greater hand in it. If the government policy is that which pushes artists in front, it equally in encourages business persons to venture into the music industry, and by so doing, you'll see them becoming independent. So they could come the line in Nigeria because the government cannot come easily and press on them. But in the Cameroon, as I said earlier, if you, you are not attending a ruling party event that could put food on your table, then you are finished. Like what the artist said, they don't have any legal backing. So at the end of it, the artists have very little, even the hashtag we're talking about. Now, put up hashtag because it's copy work. You are doing copy work. What is the essence of the hashtag? It has no impact. Mm -hmm. Because if people have spoken, some of us have been ranting here for four years on media, <laughs> ranting and ranting, <laughs> and you only looks at us as if we're acting drama, <laughs> then it is not the hashtag you will say. They only look at you and laugh, and it, it can instantly put into problems. So artists, just stay where you are eating your cold money. <laughs> Don't enter copyright in Nigeria in the name of hashtag. Tomorrow, you enter trouble, and then sometimes they say, they have called you, you have called you with a human head in your back. They can put you in your back. Mm -hmm. Something in your back and say they have called you with human head. Sure. Bam, you are gone. Yeah. So don't even venture. I, I know people like copy work. Artists, just be singing your music quietly. quietly. Allow us taking the risk and going ahead. If you put a hashtag, you enter trouble tomorrow, it's your wahala. Okay, it's your uh, wahala. Uh, many, many messages. Um, I'm not really in the best of moods this evening. So we will, I will not read further. It's difficult for me. Uh, we have to end at this uh, juncture. If God is willing, I may be in uh, Muteng in a tomorrow to make some findings about uh, the land issue. But tomorrow we surely are going to have every broadcast of uh, the program of last night. Uh, tomorrow we want to say thank you to you, Far, for coming. Yeah, it is my pleasure. The crusade for illegalities in schools continue. And until I hear the government say stop, and the government says refund these monies, the crusade will continue as I continue paying surprise visits to the schools as I did last week, as I did this today, and as I'll be doing in the days ahead. Thank you. We only want to say thank you to you, Aquen, for coming. Thank you, Mr. Leona. Thanks for the invitation. It was a pleasure being with you. It, it was a pleasure talking about very important topics that really eat deep to the marrows of our citizens. All I want to say is um, the problem of Konak and the um, the atmosphere of corruption in Cameroon, only neutral political bodies can rise up and fight against this corruption. Because as for Konak, I tell you they have nothing to bring favorable to the table of the Cameroonian citizens and their plights. Okay. We quickly want to say thank you to you for coming. Yes, thank you, Mr. Kubluna, for the invitation. Um, this is the first time that I'm invited in uh, in this program. Um, I want to say thank you to all Cameroonians who are watching us right now. I think we are not against you, the government officials. The Bible says to serve the Lord in truth and in spirit. We are here to say the truth so that you, government officials, you who is, uh, you who is in Yaoundé watching us right now, I think this is the time that we have to sit in our table, we look at what went wrong, and we see where we are going, how we can change it, and how Cameroon can be forward. Thank you very much. <clears throat> we want to thank you all who took time off to watch the program across the nation and out of uh, Cameroon, and uh, especially to those who sent text messages. We want to thank the production team. Also, tomorrow, God willing, I'll be in Mutengene. Stay blessed. Bye-bye. <laughs>